So, for no real reason, I bought this 2001 325XI Auto wagon. I guess it was $400, so I bought it because it was ridiculously cheap. Hasn't been driven, hasn't been started in almost a year. Brakes were locked up pretty decently. Um, what else? Oh yeah, I just threw a battery in it, started it, and drove it off. The, uh, the thermostat seems like it's a pretty high temperature unit. I'm a little worried about the temp gauge, but it hasn't gone any higher in about 10 miles. Obviously we have a low coolant light too, trying to not nuke this thing right off the bat. But honestly, it drives like it was really, really well looked after mechanically. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this yet. Maybe manual swap it, use it for polar on this year, or just you know, turn it to somebody who needs a reasonably solid daily, I guess. Either way, it's a $400 running, driving E46 Touring. <laughs> what a beauty. <laughs> So I finally found a radiator shroud for the 129. Uh, this involved buying another used radiator just to get the pleasure of being able to buy this shroud. I think I paid $180 for this plus shipping, so ridiculously hard to find. However, I will say Mercedes, and I'm not gonna take this off right now, but they have the best design. I think this is even the same way in like the 2.6 190s. It's a two-piece shroud, but you don't have to pull the fan to take the shroud off. So the main shroud is actually thin enough to get between the fan and the radiator. And then this actually does a little bit of a, kind of a slotted rotate and then it slips over the fan. So you can slip that down on first, leave it there, put the shroud in. And then when the shroud is fastened, you can just pull this up against the main one piece shroud and clip it on. And then it still directs the air just as well. I'm sure it's a cost thing, which is why you don't see that that often on other vehicles, but geez. Also, if you're repairing a 600, here are the two relevant part numbers for the radiator and the shroud. Ridiculously hard to find. Uh, if you know anybody with a 600 that needs a radiator, actually needs it, let me know. I have one of the few that are out in the world, apparently not in a car. So um, all that's left to do really on this now before it's good to go for the season anyway. I'm not perfect yet. I'll handle more of this stuff over the winter. Um, is just getting it up on the lift and topping up the transmission the proper way, which is at operating temperature with the fill plug out, this and that. So um, I guess stay tuned for that, but she's getting awfully close. So I finally got the wheels all done up with those faux Alpina badges or whatever. <laughs> they fit pretty well on standard uh, E30 bottle cap center caps on these E21 13s. Uh, I I think it looks good, so whatever. Uh, back to the fuel pump situation. I actually remembered to bring a sender with me. I will have to find a plug for it, but man, I took this thing out of a car probably half a decade ago, but it's free in there, more or less. Um, if you order one of these AirTex things, uh, it actually does come with a new sender gasket too, which is really nice. Of course, the main O-ring, pretty much imperative, and it also comes with new uh, washers and nuts, which is super cool. So first step's just gonna be uh, putting this thing in all alone, making sure to keep that O-ring seated nicely. And yeah, so the big one, I'm gonna try to face that way. Oops. This tank is so full of gas, it's ridiculous. Um, so I actually think I want to put it in one notch more that way, if I can. Uh, I'm going to need two hands for this. I'll come back when that's in. Those brand new O-rings are pretty stiff, um, but it's looking good. I think I can make this sort of routing work, and I'm probably going to use this for the return. It's not ideal but it looks like it fits pretty well. Um, I'm actually gonna pick the old, oops, pick the old gasket out of this thing and install that fresh new one. It comes in our little encyclopedia of hardware. Um, that old O-ring was super flat on this thing. Still sealed just fine, but uh, since we have all the new stuff, I'm gonna do that up, little eight millimeters, just uh, make sure you nut and um, washer them. So, should be pretty good. Oh, that old gasket was quite well perished. 
So this should be uh, pretty good. I have to remember on the pinout for these later sensors, which ones are the sweep. Now obviously this pin is the ground right here. So I'm guessing I probably have to ground two of the pins and then um, the blue yellow is our signal to the gauge. But again, I'll, have to, I'll pull that out. Uh, I'm gonna have to get some uh, larger diameter fuel line as well as potentially cutting this off just a little bit to make that angle. And then uh, running a return line, which is gonna be heaps and heaps of fun. But I have to kind of decide whether or not to run AN um, that fancy braided stuff, or if I should just go with regular old fuel line. I'm probably inclined to just run regular old rubber. Uh, new stuff that's ethanol tolerant, of course. Uh, these pumps were made recently enough where they're very ethanol tolerant, and I'm, again, super happy that this tank is, um, full, full of gas. It makes it a lot, lot harder for them to rust out, which is all too common, so... I think we dodged a bullet there, and this install looks factory fresh. I gotta say, thank you BMW for not changing the little hole design you use in your tank, or really even the depth, for like 40 years. So that's pretty cool.